Hi, I have Jeff Wolf back on the show again from Xilab. Jeff, thanks for coming back. Thank you. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about trends in artificial intelligence as it relates to e-discovery and the review process that comes along with that. Jeff, what do you see happening um, right now with artificial intelligence as it relates to the e-discovery review process? So um, what we've noticed over time is that, uh, you know, in, in traditionally artificial intelligence was always deemed to be uh, only valid in cases where you had hundreds of thousands or millions of documents. And uh, one of the changes that's happened over the last few years is that the artificial intelligence models have gotten so much better that you can now use them for much smaller data sets. And so we, we, uh, we evangelize the use of artificial intelligence in smaller data sets, even you know, a thousand documents you're going to get a better review, more efficient and more correct, faster with AI than you would with a, a team of reviewers. So if, if you have a project and you're using your platform, after, let's say there's a, a, million doc, a, a million pages of documents sure. that need to be reviewed. You put a review team on starting that process yep. and they start categorizing and coding. As they get through the first 10,000 documents, what is, what is your software doing to help make this process more efficient and effective for them? Sure, so if you're using traditional, uh, what we call supervised machine learning, um, that's used to be referred to as predictive coding, um, what our software allows you to do is train a small training batch, so a small sample of the documents, and code them for responsiveness, whether they're responsive or not responsive, mm -hmm. and we've made it very easy for users to do that. So you can create issues, and for each issue you get two tags, responsive or not responsive. And you just train, you look through a bunch of training documents and you tag the documents appropriately. Um, and the machine classifier learns very quickly what is responsive, what is not responsive. So maybe after two or at most three training batches, the classifier is now bringing you back almost exclusively responsive documents. It's already smart enough to do that. And so you only need a few training rounds um, to get the classifier well over the 80%, typical 80% precision and recall threshold that most uh, attorneys feel is what the human is capable of. Uh, the, but the machine will do 90, 95% uh, precision and recall. So you can be assured not only are you getting a more efficient but more and more correct review, uh, but you're also doing it in a whole lot less time with a whole lot less people. And so uh, are your algorithms looking for synonyms and similar phrasing that m that has you know equivalent word matches? It's, it's a bit of secret sauce, but yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean the, you know we we use a, a support vector machine based uh, set of algorithms, mm -hmm. uh, kind of the most modern version of uh, of machine learning, and uh, it is effectively under trying to understand it understands what are uh, topics that were identified in the document, and what other topics are like them. So that's how it's doing an identification. But you're effectively training a neural net. So so the the people using your platform, are they having to necessarily review all the documents or are you basically, based on the trained review process, you're taking that universe of a million and as they get through it, it's starting to cluster. Correct. There's a set that this probably isn't useful and you don't have to look at it, but you can look through it just to see. Sure. They have confidence that it's not excluding relevant stuff, right? Yeah, uh, what we find from an AI standpoint is that the, uh, the two primary use cases that attorneys have when they use AI are um, priority review. So that means, hey, I'm, I'm going to start teaching the data about, uh, the, the classifier about my data set, and uh, I'm going to show what responsive documents look like, and then I want it to rank all the remaining documents for me for relevance. And so I'm going to then put eyes on those top ranking documents. That's effectively looking for the smoking gun, yeah. right? That's one. But they also use it a lot for QC. And this is where I see I'm trying to push a lot more attorneys into utilizing AI is you've already done your tagging and um, you had eyes on all of your documents. Now go back and use the AI and, and compare it against what your human reviewers did and see if there were, you've missed things because inevitably, uh, your reviewers are not going to be all at the same level. Some people are going to mistag documents, mm -hmm. and the AI has a good job, is, has a, a really good chance of picking up those mistakes and showing them to you. Got it. So, uh, have have there been any uh, published studies that document the effectiveness of AI with the the review there's, process? There's too? been a bunch of them. Um, I, I know Log Geeks did one that was pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, what I what I've read recently is that only. 
about nationally, about 4% of all cases use artificial intelligence officially. Mm -hmm. But then again, there's no requirement in the meet and confer that you identify that you are using artificial intelligence in a, in a discovery case. So um, a, lot of, a lot of attorneys can be using it and just not reporting it, which is fine because uh, back when review was manual and you went through paper and banker's boxes, you didn't have to document the process for that review. Uh, so why should you have to document the fact that you're using a machine to do some of the identification of documents in the response of this today? So are, are there potential you know, problems as a result of using AI for failing to produce relevant documents? No, I think um, it, the case law already uh, demonstrates that AI is an accepted mm -hmm. form of, of using, of identifying reviewed documents. And again, if you're, even if you're just using it for QC purposes, you're still better off. Uh, you're still less likely to miss things than if you hadn't used it at all. Great. Well, this has been great. Thanks a bunch for being on the show. My pleasure. Right. My pleasure.